Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a translation of cost of goods sold, depreciation, and amortization. This topic is covered in international accounting as well as advanced accounting covered on the CPA exam, ACCA exam as well. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. Also on my YouTube, I'm sorry, on my website, I do have additional resources. So if you're planning to practice questions, exercises, have access to the notes, PowerPoint slides, please visit my website. If you are looking to study with another person for the CPA or the CFA exam, I strongly suggest you visit studypal.com. .co, no, sorry, not .com. Prior to this session, you should be familiar with the temporal method and the current method. We already have two recordings about this. You could look in the description for that. Now, let's talk about cost of goods sold. So when we're translating cost of goods sold, we have two methods. We either have the current method and the temporal method. Let's look at the current method first, and hopefully you remember what we, when we talked about the current method. The current method, remember, it's the easy method. Simply, we're going to take cost of goods sold in the foreign currency and translate it into the, into the parent company using the average rate for the period. And here's the formula. Simply put, current method is pretty straightforward, not only for cost of goods sold, for all expenses. You take the expense in the foreign currency, you multiply it by the average exchange rate, you will get your cost of goods sold in the parent company. So the current method is pretty straightforward. This is it. Now let's talk about the temporal method when it comes to cost of goods sold. Well, what's going to happen with the temporal method, and here you have to have it, hopefully you have a good understanding about cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending you get to cost of goods sold. So notice it's composed to get to cost of goods sold, you have you, you have three items, beginning inventory purchases and ending inventory. So what we're going to have to do under the temporal method, we're going to have to decompose the beginning inventory from purchases from, from ending inventory. And for each component, we must translate this at the appropriate historical rate. So we have to look at three, basically three different pieces at the same time. So let's take a look at an example without numbers, but just let's take a look at the formulas. We, we, we would look at numbers later on in another, in another session. So beginning inventory in year two was acquired evenly so if we have beginning inventory remember beginning inventory as last year ending inventory if it was acquired evenly throughout the fourth quarter of year one then the average exchange rate in the fourth quarter will be used so for the beginning inventory we'll use the average rate of the fourth quarter so simply put if we're looking at this is year one and this is year two. So we're looking at beginning inventory right here. What's going to happen? We're going to use for the beginning inventory here, we're going to use the average of the fourth quarter. Whatever the average rate here, we're going to use the average rate. Why? Because we're assuming we're using first in, first out. It means all the inventory that we have, we're assuming was purchased in the fourth quarter. Therefore, we use the fourth quarter. So that's the beginning inventory. That's how we translate it. Likewise, the fourth quarter year two exchange rate will be used to translate ending inventory. So for year two, when we get to the end of the year, now we're looking right here, the end of the year ending, we're going to be using the, uh, the fourth quarter year two exchange rate will be used for the ending inventory. Okay, whatever that fourth quarter year two exchange rate is. Now, the purchases now throughout the year, throughout the year, we're going to be making purchases. If purchases were made evenly throughout the year and we can make that assumption, then the average year to exchange rate will be used. So for here, we use the average for the whole year. Let's take a look at this from another perspective. The beginning inventory and in foreign currency were multiplied by the historical exchange rate, the fourth quarter of year one, and that's going to give us beginning inventory in the parent company. The purchases, again, we assume they occur throughout the year. Therefore, we would use the average exchange rate for year two. That's going to give us the purchases that we're going to be using in the parent company. And the ending inventory, we're going to be using the historical exchange rate for the fourth quarter, year two. And that's going to give us the ending inventory. So beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory will give us cost of goods sold in the parent company. So this is how we translate cost of goods sold. Remember, this is the temporal method. <laughs> under the current method, once again, under the current method, we'll take this number right here. We multiply it by the uh, current rate and we're done. 
that's that's all what it takes okay now let's take a look at application of lower of cost or net realizable value for inventory well let's start with the current method which is really the straightforward method the current method we're going to take the ending inventory reported at the foreign currency balance sheet balance sheet then we're going to translate it at the current exchange rate regardless whether we carry it at cost or lower of cost lower at cost or at lower of cost or net realizable value so simply put we'll take ending inventory times the current exchange rate with the current method just like cost of goods sold will take cost of goods sold times the current exchange rate for the temporal method it's going to be a little bit more involved we're going to require the foreign currency cost and the foreign currency exchange net realizable value of the inventory to be translated into the parent company currency at the appropriate exchange rate so simply put for the currency for the foreign currency it has to be at the appropriate exchange rate whatever that exchange rate is And when it comes to the NRV, net realizable value, it has an, uh, at the appropriate exchange and the lower of the parent currency cost or parent currency net realizable value. Again, we have to translate it into the parent company NRV. So basically, in a sense, we have to worry about two things, the foreign currency, which, which rate do we use, and the NRV value. So simply put, as a result of this procedure under the temporal method, it's possible for inventory to be carried at cost on the foreign currency balance and at net realizable value at the parent, uh, parent currency consolidated financial statements or vice versa. Okay, let's talk about property, plant, and equipment, and we're going to start with the temporal methods. We're going to start with the most challenging method this time rather than the current method. So item of property, plant, and equipment acquired at different times must be translated at different exchange historical rates. So whenever we, whenever we bought them, we have to keep track of that rate. The same is true for depreciation and accumulated depreciation. Simply put, you bought it at a different rate. You keep track of it for that rate. The depreciation expense will be for that rate and accumulated depreciation will be for that rate. You buy another asset at a different date. That asset, you bought it at a different exchange rate. It will be kept track of using that rate the depreciation expense at that rate and accumulated depreciation for that rate. So, so simply put, you're going to have more work to do when it comes to the temporal method. Okay, for example, if a company bought a piece of equipment on January 1st for 1,000 foreign currency when the exchange rate was 1, then they bought another piece of equipment on January 1st year 2 when the for, uh, for $4,000 when the exchange rate was 1.2. So this, this, was, this was the rate when we made the purchase. So let's take a look at how we report them first on the balance sheet. Both pieces, um, both pieces of equipment have a five-year useful life for depreciation purposes. Under the temporal method, the amount of which equipment will be reported on the consolidated sheet will be as follows. Although the exchange rate, now December 31st exchange rate is 150, we don't care. Why? Because we want to go back and keep track of how much we we paid for them on the date of the exchange. Well, on the date of the exchange for the one piece, the exchange rate was one, therefore it's reported at the parent company for $1,000. The other piece, the 4,000 foreign currency, when we bought it, it was 1.2. The, the rate was, uh, the rate was uh, 1.2, therefore it's reported at the parent company for 4,800. Now, let me ask you this. Can you guess what would the current method will do? The current method's gonna take this amount, multiply it by 1.5. We'll see it later. That's the current method. I just wanna show you how the current method would report this. Okay, but this is the temporal method. Now, again, let's go talk about depreciation. Depreciation expense will be reported um, will be reported for year one for both assets. You know, this is five year, therefore 20%, 1,000 times 0.2, because it's a five-year policy, 20%. So it's it's multiply at the exchange rate of a, do of a dollar. The $4,000 times 20% will give you 800 of depreciation. The depreciation expense will be translated at 1.2 for the second asset because the rate was, when we bought it, was 1.2. So notice the expense, the rate for the depreciation expense, it's different for each asset. That's interesting. It's interesting. Okay. Now, what would we do for the current method? We're going to use the average rate for the year, whatever that average rate is. Okay. But for the temporal method, it's, it's requires more work. So you have to keep track of each asset separately. Hopefully you appreciate the fact that it's more work. And if you appreciate the fact that it's more work, you're, can, you're getting the big picture. Okay. Then accumulated depreciation, the same thing. Year two, we're going to have two years of accumulated depreciation after having this asset for two years times one. And this is, 
year two because we bought it in year two so this should be 800 times 1.2960 so again accumulated depreciation is kept track using that specific rate now if we have any intangible asset it's treated the same way it's treated the same way the way we account for it now let's look at the current rate method which is the current rate method once again it's generally speaking simpler or simpler simpler let's put it this way simpler so simply put um, at year two we have two assets one we bought for a thousand one we bought for four thousand we don't care what was the rate when we bought those assets when we bought them at one one dollar for the foreign currency one 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 point two we don't care what we care about is the December 31st year two the rate was 1.5 therefore we're going to take 5,000 reported at the current rate so it's simple we don't have to keep track I mean think about if you have many assets and companies do have a lot a lot of property plant and equipment that they purchase throughout the year the current rate make it simple just give me how much you paid for them translate them at the current rate now the depreciation expense will be reported at the average year to exchange which happens to be 1.4 so what we do is we'll take the thousand the asset for a thousand dollar and we multiply it by 1.4 therefore our depreciation expense will be uh, 1400 why 1000 just in case you're wondering why 1000 because 200 and 800 200 of depreciation for the first asset 800 for for year two this should be year two because this is we have the asset for year two so simply put we have 1000 of foreign currency depreciation we translate it at the average rate so this is the average rate for year two we don't care what was the rate when we bought this asset we use the average rate simpler accumulated depreciation same concept we have 1200 of accumulated depreciation we multiply it by year end because this is a balance sheet remember accumulated depreciation is a balance sheet account it's a counter asset therefore we translate this amount at the year end which is 1231 okay 1800 now again in this example the foreign subsidiaries had only two items could you only imagine if you have 50 items now of course you could you could have software that keep track of it but the fact that you're creating all this work is it really is it really worth it creating the substantial additional work to translate the financial statements anyhow if you have any questions about this topic please email me and if you want additional resources exercises um, well multiple choice or the powerpoint slides please visit my website consider uh, subscribing it's an investment in your career good luck and if you're studying for your cpa exam study hard it's worth it